This presentation examines the chi-square test for homogeneity of proportion. Here's our background. In 2006, several elementary schools around the world participated in a project examining the distribution of colors for pieces of a breakfast cereal. The data from that project is available at the site at the bottom of the slide. The students in the project discovered that orange was the most common color and the question we're going to ask is in the manufacturing process is the proportion of orange pieces always the same or might it change depending on where the breakfast cereal is produced so in general here are the null and alternate hypotheses we are going to use for a test of homogeneity of proportion we have several proportions in this case k of them and h naught is that they are all the same p1 equals p2 equals p3 equals dot 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 equals pk remember the p's are parameters so the p1 would represent the proportion of orange on the day that the first box of cereal was produced p2 would be the proportion of orange that was produced for that entire day that the second box was produced etc ha is at least one pair are different so can we find a pair of boxes of cereal that indicate the proportion of orange on those two days must have been different because the two samples are so different. So here's our data. School 1 had 386 orange pieces out of 1,648. School 2 had 539 pieces out of 2011, etc. There are five schools for us to compare. So H0 will be P1 equals P2 equals P3 equals p4 equals p5 and h a will be at least one p sub i is different from p sub j and again the location of the data is at the bottom of the page all i will add to the discussion of the data was i removed the broken pieces from the discussion if you look at the data there are 50 or 60 broken pieces in each box and rather than including them in the total they were removed from the discussion so we have five schools Orange, we had to go ahead and put in the non-orange pieces so that we can use our chi-square test appropriately. And the total would be the numbers on the bottom, the sum of the orange and the non-orange or other pieces of data. Now we need to get our chi-square statistic. Our chi-square statistic is the sum of observed minus expected squared divided by expected. And we will get that, that number by looking at Excel. So I have the observed numbers. Of course, we need the totals. So let's get the total number of orange from the five schools. So we're going to say equals the sum of these five schools. And that gives us 2,048. And we will continue that down in each situation. So we have our observed. Now we also will need our expected numbers. So for our first expected number, What's it going to equal? It's going to equal 1648 times this number, which I'm going to put in 2048 to enable me to program it properly, divided by 9113, the total number in our set. And we're going to let the column vary. So I will scroll that one across all five places. Similarly here, we have our second piece, so we need this number times the row number, which is 7065, divided by 9113. And we can scroll all those numbers. And we do the same thing with our third row equals, this is what we're going to want to change. Actually, there is no third row. We only have two numbers, orange and other. The third row, of course, is our total. So we have our, our totals should be the same. We could see that if you'd like. Equals the sum of those two numbers. And you should see that those totals should always be the same. And similarly, the totals out here should be the same. So that gives us our observed and our expected numbers. At this point, we're able to begin our work on the chi-square statistic. Remember, the chi-square statistic will be observed 
minus expected squared divided by expected. So for each one of these, we're going to want to take equals the observed number, excuse me, in parentheses, equals the observed number minus the expected number squared divided by expected. And we can scroll that one all the way across. One, two, three, four, five numbers there. And we do the same thing with our second row equals the observed number, 1262 in parentheses first. 1262 minus the expected number, 1277.64, squared divided by the expected number. And then we will scroll that all the way across. And then we know that our chi-square is the sum of all those. So our chi-square will equal what? Will equal the sum of all of these numbers. And what does that give me? Gives me a chi-square of 92.711. But before we can continue, we also need to know what our degrees of freedom are. Degrees of freedom number of rows minus 1. We have two rows, orange and others. Times columns minus 1. We had five columns, school 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 2 minus 1 is 1, 5 minus 1 is 4, so we have 4 degrees of freedom with our chi-square test statistic of 92.711. To find our p-value, we're going to need to find the area to the right of that test statistic. So in order to find that p-value, we're going to go to this applet to identify what that value will be. Here we have 4 degrees of freedom. And we're looking for the area to the right of 92.711. Is that an extreme value for the test statistic chi-square? Well, you can see anything beyond 20 is an extreme value. So 92.711 is a very extreme value, and we get a p-value of 0. So our p-value is very, very small. And when the p-value is small, we have to reject h naught. Now we have to think about what that really means. So if we look at our H0 and our HA, our H0 stated that all of the proportions had to be the same. It stated that the proportion of orange pieces had to be the same each time these five boxes were produced. So if we assume the population is the entire production day, we are going to assume that these five production days all had the same overall proportion of orange pieces. But we rejected H0. H0 is thrown out, which means we have to support HA, which tells us at least one pair of proportions are different. So how have I written this? I've said we have strong evidence, again with the p-value so small, to conclude that at least one pair of proportions are significantly different. The proportion of orange pieces are not all, of this, all the same for each of those five production runs. Now let's see how we can solve this problem on Minitab. The data is stored in columns 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Remember, each of these columns represented a different school. School 1, school 2, school 3, school 4, school 5. Each row represented pieces. The first row was the number of orange pieces, and the second row was the number of other pieces, non-orange pieces. And the way that we compute is to use the chi-square command. Our data is in columns C1 through C5. So the command is chisq chi square c1 through c5. And then we'll see what those results look like. So you'll notice it says expected counts are printed below observed counts. Observed counts on top, expected in the middle, and the numbers on the bottom are observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Now let us notice a couple things. Number one, observed and expected just off by 16. But number two, school two, observed and expected, very different. School three, observed and expected, off by 100. School four, observed and expected, off by 48. School five, observed and expected, off by another considerable margin. So you can see that the observed numbers and the expected numbers are very different. That leads us to a very, very large chi-square of 92.711, which agrees with what we had before. Our degrees of freedom are four, and our p-value is zero. 
strong evidence that the proportions of orange pieces in each of those five boxes are significantly different. If they represent runs, we could say that the manufacturing runs for the five days that those five boxes were produced had different goals for the proportion of orange pieces in the breakfast cereal. And that will conclude this presentation.